we've started our journey to um, the city. Um, it's a day trip to the city. Um, so it's called a trip to the city on our anniversary day. Trip to London City. Just started. It's much easier to go on a bus or on a train to the city and um, there's no point driving there because of um, the parking restrictions and the charges and all that. So it's best you are free. You're going on a hop off, hop on bus. Um, that is for tourists. So you're going to do the hop on, hop off bus. So we're going to get a ticket and then we zoom right in. So, in the neighborhood, trying to get out of here to the city. Today is Sunday, um, the temperature is 27 degrees Celsius. It's a bit warm, it's gonna get warm, warmer tomorrow. Um, there's um, a weather alert of um, heat wave coming Monday and Tuesday. But obviously it's starting today. So today is gonna be warm and it's still warm. So it's almost 12 noon and we are just getting started. Waiting to get some cash for the ticket. We're on a bus now. Quickly getting something from the shop and then carry on. You're right, long time. <laughs> Traveling, are you not? Towels. I had your ma Oma stock here. It's a fully stocked shop. It's everything you need. Everything you want is here. Sainsbury's shop. Traveling big. Really? Really?
二十、三十、三十。It's one, uh huh. It's spring, yeah. Yeah, spring. I'm going to have a travel session. Travel session, yeah. On the peripherals. You are sure our travel session? Hello, bro. Very daily day. Uh, uh, day. Wow. Like the antipas, bro. Hello, bro. Mm -hmm. I mean, so. Where, where do you say anti perspiration? Where do you say anti perspiration? It's true, anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, remember. 48 hours. Uh-huh, I'm probably going to go around to this one. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'll just switch.
Church Station. Going on the 188. Is it 188 or 181? 188 Tower Bridge. 188 to Tower Bridge to catch the hop on hop off bus. Let's have a view um, of Canary Wharf.
Beacon Road towards London Bridge. So let's go to London Bridge. Uh, Where London do we get the bus? London Bridge, you're about to make bus now. Yeah, so let's go to London Bridge. So okay, we are exercising, walking. We are close to the city now, walking towards um, London Bridge. So we can get a bus, isn't it? The shack has the tallest building in London. I zoomed it earlier on so you can check it out there. Is it last time? It's 28 degrees at the moment. Before we set up, it was 27. Now it's 28 degrees. So, um, the weather temperature is increasing. It's getting warmer. Tomorrow is a heat wave, so guys, be careful. 
tomorrow is the 18th of July. So you gotta be careful when you're going out because the heat wave is gonna hit the city in every corner of this continent. I'm gonna wait for the bus. Excuse me. We are looking for Chinese food to eat. Chinese food. Yeah. Um, you can try the market here. The market, yeah. Just down there, check around. Okay. It's not there. Thank All right. You. Thank you. It's not just a tourist, you know. I have not uh, much more. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Then do we say, Anna? Ah, where do you have some type of thing? Because when we are here, you better check it. Oh, see, I see whiskey ginger. The shot, tallest building in London. London Bridge Hotel. Say, then I'm who say the refire. Some say, then I'm who say the refire. 
little lake, yeah. shopping center or something. Oh my shopping mall, I see. I'm going to be a mouse. Wait, wait, wait a second. Oh, Joe. I'm going to be a mouse. Wait. The shot offices. <clears throat> That's the shot. We are going out. the J. the street so the J is there isn't it Now, 
Several people have tried to cross the Tower of London when the bridge has been folded up. And indeed, one of these people was a stuntman, rode across it on a motorcycle, and thankfully made it up one side, down the other. Another person who tried this was a London bus driver. Indeed, it was the 1960s, and this bus driver missed a traffic light, the traffic light that would tell him to stop as London Bridge, not London Bridge, Tower Bridge, was folding up. However, instead of turning around, he decided these passengers need to get somewhere. So, he decided to gun the engine. He drove up one side and down the other safely. For his heroics, he was rewarded with a day off. However, I don't think our driver's going to have to do anything quite as dramatic today. No, we should be fine. That's so funny. Now, indeed, this was a feature of the original bridge, as it was to get ships into the pool of London to be bustling up of trade. But, unfortunately, now it doesn't see as much trade as it's done in outside ports on the coast, such as, say, well, Essex. But, indeed, there are still people who come through today, as you might think it's still folded up, though it's likely to be a massive super yacht bring or to shut off. They remained up there until the Of the first world war, poppies were, were, were covering the entire boat. Now, you 
wise considering this is where the great fire of London happened. Who am I to question to pass the site of a landmark case. Literally. If you look on our left, you might be able to see the tower where on the top it reads OXO. Now, for those who don't know, there is a brand of gravy stock called OXO. And this caused a lot of controversy as you see you're not allowed to advertise on the pretend certainly at the time this was built. So as a result, Lloyd from Bob saying to OXO, how come you're advertising on this tower? At which point they said, oh no, it's got nothing to do with us, it just reads O X O. Yeah. It's completely random, it just happens to be the exact same letters used in our company's name. And as a result, it still stands to this day as a loving memorial to do. Interestingly, this, while looking pretty awful, 
has a few attractions, including some fountains where on a hot day like today, I'd recommend running through there if you have a nice change of clothes. Just passing Cleopatra's Needle again, this is here on our left. The thousand years old companion to the money that now stands in Central Park to York. state secret through the windows but they need not worry since the Ministry of Defense goes down actually quite a few stories underneath this and now we come to the famously hard to turn photograph sign of New Scotland Yard home of the Metropolitan Police and indeed where some of you literary fanatics may know that Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson would go to get orders from Inspector Lestrade but coming up we have the Houses of Parliament now can anyone see Big Ben? Not an interesting club, we just come to stop here at Westminster here. But the interest no one can see Big Ben. Because Big Ben is not the clock tower. Big Ben is the bell. You see, it's become a big source of confusion as because the name Elizabeth Tower is a little boring and not actually all that old. Elizabeth Tower was only named when the Queen happened to be round the House of Parliament and said, well, one could, name this, one could name the clock tower after me, and so they did. Now, it is falling on us at this very moment. It was discovered Big Ben was built on bad foundations, and as a result, it is falling six inches to the right. As a result, it will be on top of us in... 20,000 years, so for now I think we're safe. But I believe that is a thing to look up at, and the fourth most selfie monument in the world. So if you want to up to number three, now is a perfect opportunity. No, it's not possible. So what does it? 
To our right, we will be able to see Westminster Station, the deepest accessible point in all of London, at least to public pedestrians. Indeed, you will see, if you go inside that right hand of Jubilee Line, why we call it the back end. But, we'll just about to be turning the corner to our next stop for Westminster Bridge, Westminster Palace, and the Houses of Parliament. As of Parliament, Big Ben, and the Horse Guard. one in the world. This is because that's the one they use when they're trying to do the how many people can you fit in a Red London, a Red London phone box competition. Indeed, I believe currently the record stands at about 12 people, all of whom were six foot, which on a day like today I do not envy them. that the first traffic lights in London were installed in Parliament Square. Indeed, they were put up, then about 20 minutes later they exploded, and ironically, the traffic was much better after they exploded than before. We're now just coming up to our stop here for Westminster Station, Westminster Pier, Westminster Bridge, quite a lot of Westminsters here, but also the cabin of war rooms, so this is your stop. It will be a while before we go back towards the London Place, so if any of you would like to get up and walk there yourself, then this will be the place you will run. If not, we will be going on to Trafalgar Square and Victoria. Yeah. 
Destination Downing Street just coming up on our left. Cheese and wine for the news. But indeed, we are just about to come up with the first dance parade. Shortly, I will be doing the changing of the guards. They change the horse guards every hour and a half and the regular guards every hour. Indeed, you might see some of their actors not really envy by the position. Indeed, they are rather hot in this weather, but they do a very good job. And indeed, when they're not guarding the queen, they are indeed some of the front lines. Theatre currently showing the <coughs> as well, showing the Phantom of the Opera, the second longest 
from his running at musical in the in London, only surpassed by Ben Zara. Although only by one year, both have been running for almost 40 years each. On our right, we have the memorial to the Crimean War. The Crimean War was, of course, fought by soldiers, but it is mainly known for the nurses. For example, Florence Nightingale, she went with her own battalion of nurses, insisting all of them be clean and sober when tending to soldiers, and as a result, they managed to prevent a lot of casualties. And this, but there was also Mary Seacole, who made her own way over from Jamaica. And she also, while not even given her own battalion of nurses, she treated soldiers herself and became almost another baby for them. She, in fact, instituted many reforms when she got back to Jamaica, as well as introducing quite a few of Britain. But we will cover quite a few of those in the Kiko St. Thomas Hospital. On our left and right, we have salons and boutiques. Salon and boutique are French for expensive, if anyone is interested. And we are just coming up to the place to shop till you drop. To spend till you bend, to spend a lot of money, and it isn't even funny. We have Piccadilly Circus, the critical answer to Runner. Indeed, it has some giant neon signs, and in fact, some of the advertisements have been running for quite a few years. The longest running being Coca Cola, having its spot on Piccadilly Circus for the last half a century. It's not just the neon that is the important, one of the interesting materials around Piccadilly, it is also the aluminium. Bit surprising, but despite, of course, electronic advertisements being a relatively new thing here when they were first established Piccadilly, another thing that was the first of its kind was one of the first aluminium statues in Western Europe. The statue of Gyros, which you may be able to see on the right just coming up. Now we're just coming to the stop for Piccadilly Circus if anyone would like to get off the explore Leicester Square, Piccadilly Circus, Soho or Chinatown or just have a nice walk down Piccadilly. being where she buys her books, but it is also open to the public, indeed it is of quite a few floors, but also we have Fortnum and Mason, Fortnum and Mason is not only where the Queen buys hampers for her servants every Christmas, it is also the unlikely birthplace of the Scotch Egg, for those who don't know a Scotch Egg, it is intended to be a cooked delicacy with egg with egg, surrounded by meat, surrounded by breadcrumbs, and this is quite nice when cooked. Unfortunately, many people in pubs make the mistake of having it raw, and as a result, it's disgusting. But the problem is also great for the afternoon tea. Fresh egg. Oh, this currently is doing its free exhibition, but also to our left and right, we have. The arcades. the arcades are not where you're going to go from. They are also, but they are, in the shopping palaces. Now, interestingly, some of them have a few of their own very specific rules. For example, Burlington Arcade has a rule where you cannot run or make excessive noise. So, as for that, Paul McCartney, when he went there and ran up and down yelling, ah, was kicked out shortly afterwards. I think his parents still wants to do the same. But we're just about to be put on the list. That's right. On our left, we have the Queen's Theatre. 
Just coming up in front of us, you can probably see the gardens. These gardens are the largest private gardens in London, and I do not envy whoever has to cut the grass. So you might be able to see at the top of the gardens actually, I mean, um, I believe there's a tennis court we might be able to see as we just round this corner, there's slightly lower walls, and you will probably be able to see the tennis court if you see Prince William playing tennis, maybe take a photo, wave hello, I don't really know what to do, but if you didn't say hello. Now, of course, you might see...
but we are also just about to go past the Grand Hotel. Grand Hotel is a rare one in London as it's one of the only ones that is still owned by the family who built it. The Grand is coming from Germany in 1910, and this was where Pippa Middleton stayed on the night before the Royal Wedding in stayed on the night before the Royal Wedding in 2011. Fun fact about that wedding, it was a private ceremony, considering that neither Prince William nor Kate were royals. Well, monarchs. So as a result, it was a purely private ceremony that just happened to be seen by one woman. Now, coming up through Victoria, Victoria named after Queen Victoria, they gave their other notes to We'll be able to see at the very top very small windows, and here is why. You see, each of the floors would be divided amongst who would inhabit them. Now, there would be basements, and indeed we'll see a few houses with basements coming up. These would be for servants to prep the kitchens. On the centre, there would be the quarters for the man and lady of the house, and then on the very top floor would be where the children would go. This... Oh, um, no, there's quite a space to be on the top, on the top floor, the children would be looked after by the governess in the nursery. There's only a small window. It is a mic, you know, they only see their parents for about five minutes a day. Though they were lucky, in comparison to the chimney sweeps. The chimney sweeps would be small children, who, in order to earn extra cash, would have to climb up their chimney with a brush. It's a very good time to be a child back in the Victorian period. Now, on our right, we have Grove the Garden. Lovely thanks although it's very tempting given how the sign is spelt. And now I'm just making a stop at Victoria Station. Here is a place to have a look around the Belgrave here, Victoria and Kensington areas. It is also where to go if you'd like to change from our Red Route. Just coming up at Victoria Station now, and then you would like to change from Red Route. How are very good the colours? Stop at Westminster and you cross the bridge. Can go back around there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah, stay on, go back around. We'll get to all the pretty quickly. So, heading through Victoria, you need now passing Victoria Station. Victoria Station, one of the other busiest stations on the London Underground, despite only having three lines going through it. The District Circle Victoria. Yes, I am a train lane. But, indeed, Victoria Station also has some things nationally, as indeed it is the key to the South East. by servants who have tried to walk them to their house. So the extra stairs up to the door, doors being made slightly wider to accompany for the sedan chair being put through, this would be a bit of an extra sticking point for the servants. And as said, probably not fun to be anyone in the Victorian period, now that I think about it. Harry Potter Studios. Now, the Harry Potter Studios, quite interesting, as the term of the coaches, as about 600 coaches go there a day. It's, yeah, it's quite something. It is, it is uh, very easily the most visited airports.
Corgis have recently been classified as their own breed of corgi, as they, due to several years breeding at the palace, they are very different to what is the current Pembrokeshire corgi. But an interesting thing we can attribute to the French is how to swear in English. Um, any children, please avert your eyes. But um, when you are trying to order two drinks, please do this, right? This means two, right? If you do this, it's very, very rude. You see, what would happen is that this would come in the Hundred Years' War, which is actually 160 years. You see, what would happen is that this was You just learn English in the corner there. Okay, said the king. And so Robert Walpole became the king's prime minister. And this is where we get the English prime minister from. Now, coming up just behind us, it's the sequel to Big Ben that none of us wanted. It's Little Ben right behind us, that clock tower just there. It's it's certainly there. Indeed, this is just outside Victoria Station. Victoria Station was 
A lot of the area was completely rebuilt, apart from the theatre currently shown in Hamilton, which I believe has been standing for about 150 years at this point. But a lot of this is very new development. Another point that is slightly new, well, slightly older than the majority of things here in Victoria will be coming up on our right. It is Westminster Cathedral. And it's a very interesting spot of in London, especially given that it's not only a rare site within London, but a very rare site within England as a whole. Just coming up on our right, it's Westminster Cathedral, a Catholic church based on the appearance of a mosque in a slightly Andalusian place on the church. So the reason this is a rare site within uh, England is because England was a Catholic country up until the mid-15, well, the early 1500s. This was, of course, when King Henry VIII fell out with the Pope over the issue of whether he was allowed to divorce his wife, Catherine of Aragon. As the Pope said no, King Henry VIII said, fine, I'll make my own church. And as a result, he and the Archbishop of Canterbury are now in charge of the Church of England. Indeed, the current monarch of the UK, Elizabeth II, also head of the Church of England. Now, because of this, it meant that many of the Catholic monasteries were dissolved, and this would be a point of contention up until a settlement was made by his daughter, Elizabeth I, but the English were not in about 25 years later. It is the South Island. Westminster Cathedral was a long town, which is all as it was around the Catholic Church. But we are now coming back along to Westminster Abbey. Westminster Abbey, another very interesting church with the name Westminster in front of it. But Westminster Abbey has been going around for thousands of years and is also important to many monarchs. You see, Elizabeth I, the one I met, I met and yeah, talked about earlier, she indeed was a subject of much reverence, but also ire, specifically from her cousin, Mary, Queen of Scots. She had been ousted from the throne in, from the throne in Scotland, and she had been taken exiled in England. Now, she wanted to overthrow Queen of Scots, and the first As a result, she attempted to assassinate Elizabeth I. Elizabeth I's spies, Francis Horsing, caught wind of this and decided that he would. Uh, and Queen Elizabeth personally signed a death warrant, meaning she was executed. But, despite being an enemy of the saint, Mary Queen of Scots is buried in her own personal crypt in Westminster Abbey, as well as many, many other royals, going far as back even as Edward the Confessor. The Confessor being around in, I believe, the 1800s. Now we also pass the pub called the Albert. The Albert is a very special pub because in it there is a bell. And this bell rings 20 minutes before there's going to be the debate in Parliament. This is because when the politicians are drinking at the subsidised bar within the House of Parliament, they are drinking at the Albert. The Albert, of course, has to try and do their job somehow. So as a result, there's a bell that rings 20 minutes beforehand, telling them, get off your bars and do your job. So, yes. We, we have then to thank the majority of all the major turnouts. But on our left, this used to be, on our right rather, this used to be a boys school. And interestingly, it's where Andrew Lloyd Webber put on his first play, Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoats. And the rest is very, very lucrative theatre history. Coming up now, we have the doors to Weapons Alley, above which you will probably see a lot of statues. These statues are dedicated to 20th century saints, as if they were martyred for their faith. The centre you may be able to make out Martin Luther King. Indeed, all of these people will become saints once they have reached, I believe there is a certain amount of, well, they have to be a certain age after death before being declared a saint. Um, yeah, so our next stop will be, um, that will just be over Westminster Bridge, but it's short walk to here. Uh, yeah, south side of the bridge, but it's just a quick walk over. Yes, tomorrow there's going to be a heat wave. Um, yes, about the 
over four. It's getting easy. I should mention actually there is going to be a heat wave um, in the country. Uh, four o'clock today is going to be, I think, the hottest temperature today, and then there's red warnings for tomorrow. But um, yeah, speaking of it, I do have some for you if anyone wants any. The Westminster Abbey is not just home to royalty, it is also home for several people who are taking the even trade in Britain. And this includes Lawrence and the former theatre director, and the most recent burial there was Stephen Hawking. And I believe, yes, that was 26 years ago. Uh, now coming back onto Parliament Square, we have all the statues of, well, Melody, Nelson Mandela, Emily Tankers, yeah. Churchill, as well as many others. We will be coming to a stop just here at the top of Belgrade Road while we wait on confirmation on whether we are going to do that. don't know, lying in was an old word for giving birth, so if anyone tells you they're having a lie in, you might want to ask some questions. We're going to be having the Leak Street Arches. The Leak Street Arches, quite a new destination. It's uh, one of the tunnels underneath Waterloo Station. 
but it has been turned into a public graffiti place, and as a result, there's quite a lot of interesting art going down there, including one by Banksy, currently on permanent display. Banksy, for those who don't know, a famous Bristol graffiti artist, now one of the most famous graffiti artists in the world. Indeed, there is also a bar and a bar, a restaurant, and a theatre in the Leap Street Arches. If anyone would like to go in, it is um, a little humid, but mind you, um, yeah, in the Leap Street Arches. But mind you, you know, you've seen these down here. So honestly, I don't know. I don't know.
although as all the scaffolding seems to have now gone, I think he probably will start running at some point this year. We're already two years late. We've been off for six years. Waterloo Bridge designed by Sir Giles Gilbert Scott and built between 1937 and 1942. During the Second World War, most of the male workforce were called up to fight in Britain. When the war broke out, leaving ladies to fill up the home of the workforce and help build the bridge, it became known as the Ladies' Bridges of Canberra. It was the first time in the 20th century that ladies had done in major construction work, but not the first time ever, back in the 1600s, and Christopher Rebel was building this wall for people. Many of the stone ladies who were selected as the building of
European headquarters of Goldman Sachs. What a thank you, because Goldman Sachs has gone back to Europe on account of Britain.